This is hands down the most insane story I've ever heard. So I once had a friend. She, she ended up escaping from the old country and came over here. I'm in Canada. She was very beautiful. One night I was commenting on how pretty she was and she broke down crying. And then she told me a story of what happened to her in her old country. She had a large family who weren't very well off. But because she was so beautiful, her father wished to marry her off to a suitor who could help support her and be a good match and maybe help the family in the future. So one day, a very attractive man came around the town. He lived a ways out of the cities and towns in the middle of the forest. He sitting at a large home and a few staff who helped care for the home. He lived out in the wilderness because he enjoyed the quiet and since he had the money to do so, he left the city and built a home to be in the quiet serenity of nature. So my friend, her father found out that this man was quite the catch and he decided to arrange for him to marry her. My friend, however, she didn't like this. She really didn't like the idea of a forced marriage because of old customs. Like that was a big thing for her, but also she just felt like something was off about this man. She couldn't really pinpoint what exactly it was, but she just felt like something was wrong. Her father, though, would not listen to her. When she tried to protest and explain her concerns, he just said that she was being emotional and she needed to stop daydreaming of marrying for love, as that's a rare thing to have. The rich, handsome man would come to the town every week to meet with her. He was following like a courting process as the father watched over their visits. The man kept asking my friend to come visit him at his beautiful home in the forest. She just kept putting him off as she didn't really feel comfortable around him. She kept telling him things like, oh, I don't know how to get there. And no, I don't have the time, things like that. Eventually, after some time, her father yeah. was really encouraging her to go see this guy and see this house because soon it was going to be her house too. And he felt like she should go check it out. As she really didn't actually know how to get to the house because it was in the forest and there was no road. So you either go on foot or you take a bicycle. So her fiance promised to leave a trail to his home. He'd spray the path in the forest with some of that spray paint made of cornstarch. So after her father kept pushing her and pushing her, she eventually decided to go one day to her new fiance's home. She just wanted to get her father off of her back. But still, she felt like something was kind of off about this man. So before she left, she gathered a, a bag of ribbon that she had. As she traveled through the forest, she would tie little ribbons on branches just to make sure that she was marking her way back home, just in case, because something was just telling her that something was still off about all this. Eventually, she came upon a log home. It wasn't very new looking and it wasn't very grand looking, so she wasn't really sure that it was the correct house. She was about to turn back, but then she saw an older woman come out of the house to grab some firewood. As she waved at the woman, went up to her and asked her if this was the home of her fiance. The older woman <gasps> suddenly had a look of fear and sadness in her eyes as she looked over my friend. And as my friend said that she was set to marry this man, the old woman grabbed her arm suddenly and told her, this man, he's not a good man. He's a cannibal. You have to hide. He's going to be coming up any second now, the old woman said in a very rushed tone. He and his brothers are likely planning to kill you and eat you. The old woman rushed my friend inside. My friend was worried that this could be part of a trap too, so she wasn't sure it was the best option to go inside, but she was kind of caught up in the moment. The old woman told her to hide in the cellar behind a big box that she pointed out. So my friend, worried that this was a trap, decided to try and sneak away from the home when the old woman walked away from her. She quietly snuck up the stairs of the cellar, but soon heard a bunch of men laughing and causing a huge ruckus as they entered the log home. My friend quickly looked around the place and saw a pantry nearby the cellar entrance. She slid into the pantry and closed the doors, holding her breath as she prayed they did not see her. As she was hiding, she watched them through the slats on the door of the pantry. She saw there were three men, one of them being her fiance. They had with them a pretty blonde girl who seemed to be enjoying their company. They started handing her drink after drink until the girl was either too intoxicated or maybe they even drugged the drinks. But the girl eventually passed out on the sofa. Once this blonde girl was passed out, the men looked at one another. My friend said that their faces changed. They looked almost evil. 
they dropped their facade of fun-looking guys and their true selves could really be seen. They grabbed a tarp that they had stashed away and they rolled the girl onto it. Then each one of them picked up axes and other tools and began to hack away, cutting up their meat for their dinner. As they were cutting up their dinner, they were also pocketing the girl's jewelry and anything else that maybe they could sell. There was a ring though that they couldn't get off one of her fingers. So one of the men used a hatchet on the finger and tried to get the ring off by cutting the finger. When he slammed the hatchet down on the finger, it went flying and it rolled into the pantry. My friend quietly gasped and very carefully pushed herself up against the side of the wall near the door to try to conceal herself. The man got up and started looking for the finger. He clearly didn't see where it actually rolled off to. As he started edging closer to the cellar door, the old woman who had been stoking a fire for their dinner called out to him and said, just look for it in the morning, it's fine. The man then agreed as he wanted to enjoy his meal with his brothers tonight. The men made the old woman cook the meat and serve it to them. My friend watching this noticed that the old woman started pouring them drinks from the same bottle that they gave the girl. The old woman did not eat or drink anything. My friend got the impression that this woman was a prisoner of theirs and they were using her to serve them. The men soon passed out snoring very loudly. The old woman shuffled her way to the cellar door to get my friend. My friend popped out of the pantry instead and almost caused the old woman to scream out of surprise. The woman held a finger to her lips and waved her hand, signaling my friend to move quietly. Both women slowly maneuvered their way out of the kitchen. As they moved, my friend accidentally tripped over one of the men's boots. One man grumbled and began to move, almost as if he was going to wake up. She thought she was caught and she froze with fear. But luckily, there was suddenly a crash of thunder outside. The man seemed to decide in his sleepy state that it was just the rain and he laid back down to sleep. The old woman helped my friend out of the cabin. My friend pleaded with her to come with her, but the woman explained that this was her home and they had her husband hostage somewhere. She had to do what they said or they would kill him. My friend nodded in understanding and told the woman that she would send help. My friend began to escape through the forest. Unfortunately, it was nighttime and she was caught in a downpour of the rain. The rain washed away all the marks of the paint that the fiance made. But with each lightning strike, my friend was able to spot the ribbons that she left tied to the branches. It took a while, but eventually she navigated herself back out of the woods and home to her town. When she came home, she told her father what happened. Her father, of course, did not believe her. He said that she was telling tall tales because she didn't want to be in this arranged marriage. My friend pleaded for her father to believe her, but he dismissed the conversation and walked away. What my friend didn't know at the time is one of her brothers overheard the tale. He thought it was such a strange tale to make up and he made a mental note that he would go to the authorities tomorrow after work. My friend slept maybe a couple of hours before hearing someone rapping at their door. She heard her father answer it and then her blood ran cold as she heard the voice of her fiance. He was speaking in his fake pleasant manner. She listened for a moment worried that he knew that she was there and witnessed what happened. But it just seemed like he was there to visit and try to encourage the wedding to happen today. Her father came and got her from the room. She begged and insisted that she wanted her father to stay with her today during this visit and the planning. She convinced him that she should come help him plan the wedding and arrange everything. Her father agreed and thought it was a great idea and he really wanted to help out with this. As the day progressed, they arranged for everything at the local church. My friend then insisted that they have a prompt-to engagement dinner that her fiance should stay for the night, eat and celebrate with the family. The fiance agreed. As they ate dinner, my friend planned her final stand. She began asking people what they dreamed of last night. As everyone exchanged stories, she smiled politely and waited patiently for her turn. When everyone was done telling tales of their dreams, she smirked as she began to tell the story of the dream she had last night. I will tell you about my dream. It was about you. She spoke as she looked over at her fiancé, who smiled in kind. I was walking alone through the woods when finally I came to a house. It looked old and worn, and I wasn't sure if it belonged there. But then I saw an old woman collecting firewood, so I went up and spoke to her. She looked over at her fiancé again, and his face was beginning to change, a look of worry just peeking over his brow. She gave him a look of reassurance and said, Don't worry, darling, it was only a dream. She continued then to tell the rest of the story. I asked the woman if my fiancé lives here. 
The old woman looked suddenly so fearful and began to cry out that I was in danger. She said that my love planned to chop me up and have me for dinner, of all things. She grabbed me and said I had to hide because they'd be arriving at any moment, so I hid in the pantry. I very quickly heard them barreling through the door with a girl in tow. I sat hiding, watching them drug this poor girl, and quickly after she fell asleep, they began working away to make her meat for their dinner. She paused and she looked around the table. Everyone had put down their cutlery out of disgust and her father began to look angrily at her. She smirked though, ignoring the dagger stare and continued telling the story. One of the men couldn't get a ring off this poor girl so he hacked off her finger, but it rolled away from him and he could not find it. The finger, as it turns out, rolled right into the pantry that I was in. She looked over at her fiance whose face had lost all its color and he started to look panicked. She then reached inside her pocket and stood up. And this is the missing finger. She held the finger up high to show everyone, finger with the ring still on it. Her fiance got up and began to try to escape. Her father, suddenly realizing that she was telling the truth, became red with anger and jumped on the fiance, pinning him to the ground. Just as the scuffle was taking place, her one brother was coming home from work and he happened to have the authorities in tow with him. For he actually believed his sister and had plans to help her after work. The authorities ended up arresting the man. They went to the cabin and arrested the brothers as well. The old woman got her home back, but unfortunately, they lied to her. They had killed her husband that first night. My friend with her brother in hand, they both decided to leave their homeland and try to find a better life. Neither of them speak with their father anymore after what he did, especially not believing her when she told him the horrors of what she saw. And that is her tale of horror that she experienced. Personally, I think the biggest lesson to pull out of this is, trust your woman's intuition. Don't let any man dictate your future.